Hi, I'm here with the fabulous Michelle Gagner, author of Don't Turn Around. Okay, so we're at Comic-Con. Who is your favorite superhero? Ah, my favorite superhero. It's not really a superhero. I mean, I have to say, I'm wearing my Star Wars shirt. Star Wars. And, you know, I saw Star Wars was the first movie I saw when I was six, or the first movie that wasn't animation. Um, and Princess Leia made a huge impact on me because she wasn't just someone sitting around waiting to get rescued. She was a princess who saved herself. Princess who saved herself. Awesome. So... Why aren't you in a Leia costume? You know, I, w I wore that for Halloween. I actually, my daughter was a stormtrooper for Halloween, and I was prin I was captured Princess Leia. So I had the costume, and I was going to do the bun heads again, but I thought it might be too much, because I've never been before, and I didn't realize... It, it wouldn't be too much. It would have been actually fairly low-key. <laughs> as long as you're not in the metal bikini, you're low-key. Um, now, Michelle, you have other books for adults. What made you decide to write a thriller for young adults? You know, someone pointed out to me that I actually had a lot of teenage characters in the adult thrillers, and they suggested that I take one of those characters and expand on a story that was just her own. Um, and I thought it was a fun idea, and actually in a lot of ways what surprised me was it was, I don't want to say the easiest book I've ever written, but I wrote it faster than any other book. I wrote the whole thing start to finish in eight weeks. And what would you say is the main difference between writing a novel for adults and writing a novel for young adults? I didn't really find there to be much of a difference. I mean, I felt like it was still a really dark story. Um, I think that the main difference for me was that in my other series, I have an FBI agent who's the main character. In this one, the kids are really on their own. They don't have the kind of resources that someone would have if they were in the police or in the FBI. So, you know, that forces them to rely on their own resources more. Which is such a teen concept. That's awesome. Um, okay, so there's a ton of, like, detailed information in this, in this book about hacking, about this medical condition that you made up, which I found really fascinating. Um, did you have to do a lot of research? I would think that things like hacking, people would get really specific in the details they would call you on if you mess them up. Well, I mean, the irony is that anyone who knows me thought that this was absolutely hilarious because I am a complete Luddite when it comes to computers. I mean, I seriously can't send, send mail from my iPhone. <laughs> So, and I had a huge computer meltdown, actually, right after I finished the book. Um, lost my hard drive completely, had to have it salvaged. So I did do a lot of research. I had a friend who runs a tech security company, and he pointed me to a bunch of uh, former hackers who worked for him. So they did a lot of the vetting of the manuscript. And then I had a friend who works in endocrinology who helped with all the medical stuff, and a friend who works in classics languages who helped me come up with the Latin name for my made-up disease. Oh, nice. So I love that you like had your pool of researchers to do it for you. But then that's the glory of writing, right? Is you can, when you run out of true things, you get to make them up, right? Exactly. Awesome. Okay. And one thing that I loved is how like fierce and intense of a character Noah is. She has this um, really almost tragic backstory, but rather than making her a victim, it's just made her this incredibly strong and resourceful, but very lonely person. Um, do you like have any characteristics in common with her or is she just a type of person that you admire? You know, I had a very different childhood from Loa. From Noah, I was very fortunate. I mean, I think that what I like so much about her is that she's had the kind of life that could have broken her and didn't. And I'm actually involved with this organization for foster kids who are aging out of the system called R Rising Tides. And the woman who founded it grew up in foster care. She spent um, 11 years living in 13 different foster homes. She was homeless for two years. And still she went on and she got uh, multiple master's degrees and she's working towards a PhD right now. And she founded this great book. So she was kind of an inspiration for me. I loved, I noticed in the book that you did talk about that organization and I loved that, you know, a lot of times we're like, oh, look at this tragic situation, this problem, but you actually were like, this is a real world problem and here are people who are doing things about it, which I really admired. Now, tell me how many books are going to be in the series? It's a trilogy. Yay! All right, awesome. And when does the next book come out? Next September. First one this September, next one September 2013. Okay, so thank you, Michelle, so much for being with us. Look forward to her book coming out this fall and have a great Comic-Con. Thank you.